In this video, we'll go over the additional features found in QMix 5. QMix 5 communicates directly with your 828 or other compatible Motu interface, so make sure your device is connected to your computer and powered on for this video. Now, launch QMix 5. As discussed in the last video, the Home tab will show you a picture of your Motu interface and some basic controls. Anything you change in QMix 5 will change on the interface. For example, you can turn on Phantom Power, enable Pad, adjust Input Gain, and Output Volume for the main outs and headphones. Below that, you can enable A-B Monitoring. This option lets you quickly check your mixes on two sets of studio monitors, A and B, connected to the main outputs and line outs 3 and 4. Press the AB on button to enable or disable this mode. When enabled, the output channels in monitor group A and B share the main out audio signal. Next, we have TalkBack. TalkBack allows you to temporarily dim or mute all audio and talk with musicians during a recording session. After connecting a TalkBack mic to any analog input, Choose the desired outputs for the talkback signal, and then click Talk to engage talkback. You can control the talkback level and how much other channels are dimmed while talk is engaged. Finally, the input monitoring section will quickly patch live inputs directly to the outputs. For instance, you can press number 1 on your phone's row to patch mic 1 directly to your headphones. Check, check, 1, 2, check. In the Device tab, you'll find some common device settings like Sample Rate, Clock Source, Pre-Fader, Post-Fader input metering options, and a section to save and load device presets. You'll also find other unique settings that allow you to maximize flexibility and control over your 828. Let's go over some of these. Loopback Location. This setting determines the position of loopback channels in the input channel list within your DAW or computer. By default, it will be channels 11 and 12 in your DAW and on your computer. But let's say a software program you'd like to use loopback with only accepts an audio input signal on the first two inputs it registers when detecting your 828. You can use loopback location to move the loopback channels from being inputs 11 and 12 to inputs 1 and 2 instead, with the other inputs shifting down by 2. Mix USB channels. By default, each mix includes USB channels coming from your computer so that you can mix the computer output signal with the 828's physical inputs. Each mix includes the main 1 and 2 USB channel plus the USB channel going to the mix itself. The Mix USB Channel setting lets you add additional USB channels to each mix when set to Additional. These appear as channel strips in each mix tab. When MIDI through is enabled, MIDI data received on the 828 MIDI input is patched directly to the MIDI output. This can be handy for connecting multiple MIDI devices to your setup. The word clock inputs and outputs on the 828 are used to sync it digitally with other devices. Word clock sync ensures that the 828 and other devices won't drift apart from one another over time, or have noise in digital audio signals that pass between them. If the 828 is the clock master device, meaning that it is operating with its internal clock setting and other devices are resolving to the 828, set this to out. If you are daisy chaining several word clock devices and the 828 is in the middle of the daisy chain, set this to through. Optical Expander Mode allows you to use the 828 as a standalone optical expander to be connected to another optical-equipped device. 
When this mode is active, the 828 analog inputs and outputs are automatically routed to and from the other device via the optical input and output banks. If the 828 is connected to a computer on your Wi-Fi network, enable network control to be able to access all of its settings wirelessly from the QMix 5 app running on mobile devices, such as your iPhone or iPad, or even other computers on the same network. You can even run QMix 5 on multiple devices at the same time. The input tab allows you to boost the signal level of any analog input on your device. You can also flip the phase for each analog input. The two USB host setting lets you choose whether the input signal going to the computer will have any QMix effects applied to the signal or not. In the SPDIF and optical sections, you can monitor your SPDIF and optical input levels. By default, the 828 uses the 8-channel ADAT optical format for both A and B optical banks. On bank A, you can optionally change the format to stereo toslink by clicking here. Note that this setting for the bank A input is independent of the format for the bank A output. Enabling the foot switch control allows you to control computer keystrokes with a foot pedal connected to the A28. When enabled, click on the down or up keystroke button and type the desired keystroke. The output tab provides controls for the 828 outputs. The monitoring section provides controls for the analog outputs. This dial controls the overall volume of the monitor group. From the factory, the monitor group includes main outs one and two. If you wish to add additional analog outputs to the group, just click their button. This allows you to control a sub-channel or surround speakers with the main volume control. The AB monitor controls, which we covered earlier in the Home tab, are duplicated here for convenience. Note that when I enable AB mode, the monitor group is temporarily disabled because the signal going to the main outs is also now being sent to outputs 3 and 4. Below the monitoring group, you have the controls for the two headphone outputs. You can control their volume just as if you were turning the knob on the front panel. And you can also choose any source signal. Notice that there are a lot of choices for what you can hear on each headphone output. If you just want to hear the main mix or any audio from the computer specifically assigned to the headphone's USB channels, choose the default setting down here. Next are the line output controls. The 828 analog outputs deliver a max level of plus 21 dBU. This section lets you trim or cut the output level of any analog output. The loopback source is the output signal that will be returned to the computer on the loopback input channels. And just like the inputs tab, you can monitor your SPDIF and optical outputs here, with additional controls for specifying what the source of these outputs will be. Also notice that the optical bank A out can be configured independently from the bank A in, which we saw earlier in the input tab for either 8-channel ADAT or stereo toslink. Here in the Discovery tab, you'll find any Motu Gen 5 interfaces on your network, such as the 828 and the Ultralight Mark V. To access the settings in a device, simply click on it. Use the Network and Password settings in the Device tab for each unit to control whether it is visible on the network and whether it requires a password to access its settings. Now that we've gone over the basic controls of QMix 5, let's move on to the monitoring system. Basic monitoring can be found in the Home tab in the Input Monitoring section. Here, you'll find three rows for main outs 1 and 2, phones 1 and 2. Click the number for the input you'd like to hear. For instance, if you want to hear line inputs 3 and 4 through your main outs, click 3 and 4 here. 
This patches the signal through the 828 from the inputs directly to the outputs so you can quickly hear yourself in real time. But what if you want to create a monitor mix? In the left hand sidebar, you'll find seven possible mix buses plus a reverb bus. Click on Main 1 and 2 Mix to view the mix settings for the main outs. Use these faders to create a monitor mix that will be sent to the main outputs on your interface. As you can see, the faders for inputs 3 and 4 have already been brought up from when I enabled them earlier in the Home tab. Those Home tab buttons are connected to the corresponding fader here in the Mix tab. Here's a quick tip. Double click the faders to automatically jump them to zero or back down to minus infinity. The fader on the far right of each mix controls the overall volume for that mix. You can also solo, and pan your tracks to create the desired monitor mix for main out one and two. And by the way, when a mix has solo channels, you'll see this solo indicator here by its name in the sidebar. But let's say you're recording another person and they're recording using headphones. They might want a different monitor mix than what's going to the main outputs. So click on the phones one and two mix tab. You can now create a separate mix for the person monitoring through headphones. This concept repeats itself for the remaining mixes and becomes increasingly more useful as you begin to record more players. For example, each one of these line output mixes could represent an external headphone monitor for each member of a band. Use each tab to adjust the headphone mix setting for each player without disrupting the raw signal being recorded. You'll also notice that each analog input channel has its own four-band parametric EQ. Additionally, each mix output has its own three-band parametric EQ. Below the EQ, you'll also find a dynamics option for each input, which consists of a gate and a compressor. Note that the changes made in the EQ and dynamics windows are global. This means that the changes you make will be shared by every monitor mix. Finally, to add reverb, bring up the reverb bus fader in the mix. Then click the reverb tab in the sidebar to access the reverb sends. Use the send faders in this tab to determine how much reverb to apply to each channel. Check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, check, check. To adjust the reverb parameters, click in the top right corner. Here, you can choose a small, medium, or large reverb setting. Check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two with pre-delay, damping, decay, and width control. Check, check, one, two, check, check. One, two, check, check, 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 one, two, check, check. Once you've dialed in the settings you want, the reverb channel in each mix allows you to adjust the overall wet reverb level for that mix. As a reminder, QMix 5 only controls input monitoring. This means that all these controls only affect what you hear while monitoring live inputs. They do not affect the raw signal going to and from the computer. 
As another reminder, when using QMix5 for hardware monitoring, be sure to turn off audio patch through in your DAW software to avoid unwanted doubling of live input signals. In Performer Lite, choose Studio Menu, Audio Patch Through, Off. You should now be ready to use QMix5 and your compatible Motu interface. For any questions, please consult the other videos in this series or your interface manual. Thanks for watching.